For this project, we will create a simplified version of a hammer by using the pen tool. If you are new or rusty with your Illustrator pen tool, remember that it is located over here in this toolbar, or use your keyboard shortcut P. When you click and release, this creates an angular anchor point. When you click and drag, that creates a curved anchor point. The curved anchor point has handles so that we can customize the curvature by rotating and stretching the handles. Again, if you are new or rusty, it takes practice, so be patient with yourself. Let's get started. We will create this hammer by building or drawing five separate shapes. Select the pen tool and zoom into the hammer's handle. We will begin here. Starting at the upper left corner of the handle, click and drag to make the first anchor point. Remember, the dragging gives me this curved point, which is why these handles appear. I'll make my second anchor point down here, also a click and drag to create the curved point. I know I can go back and adjust my curve, so I try not to worry too much about getting it just right with my first draw. Then back up to the right side of the handle top. Here you notice that it wants to make another curve, but I want a corner, an angular point. All I have to do is click again on that anchor point I just created. Doing this essentially resets my path to continue with a straight line. Now I can complete and close my shape by clicking on the first anchor point I created. Let's switch to the direct selection tool so that we can edit some of the handles. I need to break this handle down here because I want a different kind of curve on each side of this anchor point. I can do that by holding down the Alt or Option key. Now I can move this handle independently to better customize this path. I'll do the same to the other side. I need to switch to the regular selection tool if I want to move my new shape or change the colors or opacity. It's not necessary, but I like to take the opacity down while I'm still drawing. Now I will move the handle to the side. You might be wondering, why not just draw with the fill set to none and just have a stroke. The reason that drives me batty is because it is harder to move the shapes around. When we set shape fills to none, you have to click exactly on the stroke path to move your shape. Okay, on to the next shape. Select that pen tool again, and let's draw a couple of rectangles. You could, of course, do this with the shape tool. However, I wanted to show you that if you hold down the shift key while creating anchor points, we get perfectly straight lines. I am switching to the selection tool to move them to the side. At this point, actually, let's move them to my other artboard. I created two artboards so that I could have a clear before and after visual for myself. Now let's grab that pen tool again and draw the most challenging and most fun shape. I will place my first anchor point at this corner area here by clicking and releasing. Then let's place the second anchor point way over here by clicking and dragging. Notice how the arc changes by pulling out the handles. I don't want the curve here, so I will click back on that anchor to make it angular. I see that I missed a curve, but I'll go back and fix that in a moment. I'll take that opacity down so that I can see the original hammer. The idea is to create as few anchor points as possible. It takes some practice to get better at estimating where to place those anchors. Now I will go fix the curve I missed. There are different ways to do this. Be sure to have your properties panel handy. You can find it in the window dropdown. Let's switch to the direct selection tool and then in the properties panel, click on this convert to smooth icon. That changes my corner point into a curved point with handles. Now I can finesse it. Then I will change to my selection tool to move this new shape off to the other artboard. Now to the most fun part of building my hammer. Another option is to piece the shapes over the hammer to position them precisely. Then because I have my original hammer layer locked, I can easily drag and select all shapes to move them back over to the other artboard, keeping them perfectly in place. Before I began, I opened my swatches panel. If you don't see yours, you can get it from the window dropdown. I went to this icon, Swatches Libraries Menu. 
I went to neutral, then I loaded this color combo to my panel by clicking on its folder. Then I added a black to my panel because I wanted that color for my stroke. Let's now play with the colors and see what color combination looks pleasing. Let's make one more shape. We could use the pen tool, but since I want to create a perfect circle, it just makes sense to use the shape tool. It's faster and precise. So get the ellipse tool from the toolbar. You may need to click and hold on the rectangle icon to find it. If we hold down the shift key, we can draw a perfect circle. Switching to the selection tool, I'll place my circle shape over the hammer and take down the opacity. I need to tweak the size just a little. I would like this circle to have a hole in the center, you know, so that we can hang this theoretical hammer somewhere. To do that, I will copy and paste that circle and size it down. I'll now select both shapes to move them to the side. And now I can use this smaller circle as a stencil of sorts to cut out the middle. Think like a donut. Although, I don't know if donuts and donut holes are actually made that way. Anyhow, let's select both shapes and then open our Pathfinder panel. We want the minus front icon. It's that easy. Now we have a circle shape with a hole in it. I'll move this over in place and take the opacity back up. I don't need to delete any anchor points, but frankly, usually I do. So let's delete one just for practice. We do that by using the minus or plus keyboard keys to activate those functions. I'll activate the minus anchor option and simply click on an anchor point. Illustrator deletes the point and redraws the line. Let's undo that. I will do the same with the add anchor option. With this, you click anywhere on the path and an anchor is added. Let's undo that as well. Here is another way to address a corner you might want to change to a curve. That's what these little circle icon things are. They indicate areas on the path that we can smooth out in this manner. To do this, we click and drag inward. The last step is to consider stylistic changes. For example, I think I might like this piece of the hammer to be chunkier. I am using the Arrange feature to move my layers behind or in front. This is of course just one of many ways to illustrate a hammer. I personally love creating simplified components of an object in this particular manner. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it with a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be sure to catch my newest tutorials. And of course, it is always appreciated if you want to buy me a coffee as a way of supporting my efforts to keep these tutorials coming. That link is in the description below.